Hi there, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about bleeding the hydraulic system on power brake cars. So in 1967 when the Silver Shadow was introduced, it had a completely different type of braking system from the cars previous to that. Um, the cars before that had a servo assisted braking system and the Silver Shadow had a high pressure hydraulic braking system. Um, I'm going to run through the kind of components that are on that system uh, and then talk about bleeding it. It's basically the same as in the Silver Spirit, but different type of fluid, different accumulators and valve bodies, no master cylinder, but we'll get to that. Okay, so it all starts with the brake pump. This is fed hydraulic fluid from the reservoirs um, into a little shroud that sits around it. The pumps then produce high pressure into the valve body. The valve body is screwed onto the sphere and this regulates the pressure that's produced by the pump. The sphere has a diaphragm in it with uh, pressure on one, a gas pressure on one side and that stores the pressure and allows you to have a reserve of pressure. So the valve body then regulates that pressure into the system. It's then so, so it's stored there and then what happens is when you put your foot on the brake, you, this, this is a distribution valve, you put your foot on the brake and that depresses that plunger and that allows the pressure to flow through to your calipers which have pistons inside and as the pressure goes into the caliper the pistons squeeze, the brake pads then make contact with the brake disc and bring the wheels to a stop. On early Silver Shadows they had a master cylinder as well. So what you'd have is all you have four calipers on the front, all supplied with high pressure fluid. Then on the calipers, as you can see, there's four pistons here. One pair of pistons, either the top or the bottom, was supplied high pressure fluid from the high pressure system and the brake pumps, and the other set of pistons was fed by the master cylinder. It's a bit like a backup, but because you have only got these distribution valves um, like on a normal car when you put your foot on the brake you put your, you, you squash a master cylinder this has like a feel to it as you press it the harder you press it the, the harder it gets but if you're just pressing and opening and closing a valve that's not really giving you any pedal feel so the master cylinder gives you your pedal feel so when you're bleeding the system oh so and there's two of everything except the master cylinder there's two brake pumps, two valve bodies and accumulators, two distribution valves, one master cylinder on early cars, four front calipers and two rear calipers. Um, so, bleeding the system. First thing to say is you should always start off with a clean reservoir. So the reservoir, you, you have sight glasses in the reservoir. Now, you can take the, the level, the panel off that shows you the levels and then you've got uh, four screws on each side that allow the um, sight glasses to be exposed. You take the sight glasses that obviously drain the reservoir first, clean the sight glasses or replace them if they're no longer transparent, like you can't see through them anymore. You've got an O-ring behind the sight glass. That all needs to be completely clean. You need to check your filters in the reservoir. What happens is you get a load of gunk build up and, and sludge at the bottom of the reservoir. The fluid's not gonna flow properly to the brake pump. So always start with a clean reservoir. Also, any, if you're bleeding these, uh, the hydraulic system, you want to make sure that the hoses are in good condition. Hoses tend, the rubber hoses tend to swell up internally over time. They're a service item. They should be changed every 60,000 miles. Um, if not, you're not going to get a proper flow of pressure through those hoses and it's not going to return. So always make sure that your hoses are in good order and your reservoir is clean, everything like that. Um, just reading up on the workshop manual because what it tells you to do um, is to run the engine up to pressure and I, I'm going to talk through the master cylinder first and then I'm going to talk through the pressure system because it actually it tells you to depressurize the system first which can be done by pumping the pedal continuously for about 70 to 100 times. If you leave the ignition on without the engine running you keep pumping the pedal before long the red lights are going to come on to show that you've got below um, a low pressure. Keep going because it still could have some pressure in the system. 70 to 100 pumps, you should be down to nothing. Um, then you can bleed the master cylinder. 
So you leave the engine off, you don't allow the pressure to build up again. You then check which bleed screw on the rear caliper is being fed by the master cylinder. Apparently on early cars, it's top or bottom and it, it switches. So you have to make sure you're checking which bleed screw is coming from the master cylinder. Um, so once you know that, then you can bleed this like a normal master cylinder, which means you hold your foot down on the pedal, crack the bleed screw, fluid comes out, close the bleed screw, lift the pedal up, and then you're, you're allowing the fluid to get pulled in through here, not back up through the pipe from the caliper. So you keep doing that until you're getting no air through. Once you know that the master cylinder system is, is bled out properly, then you can start bleeding the power system. To do that, you run the engine, and allow the pressure to build up. So it says to hold it at fast idle, which is about a thousand RPM, until your pressure's up. It tells you to turn the engine off, but you can do this with the engine running. I'm not sure of what the implications are of having the engine running while you're doing it. Maybe it's just safer to not have the engine running, but you can, you can literally have something wedged down on the brake pedal and have the engine running. Ideally, you have someone sitting in the car and holding their foot down on the brake pedal whether the engine's running or not, as long as you've got full system pressure, you can bleed the brake system. So, foot down on the pedal, and you leave it down, you don't pump it, you just hold it down, because what that's doing is then it's pushing the plunger in the distribution valve, allowing the pressure to flow through to the calipers, and then you go around to the calipers and crack off the bleed nipples one by one, allow them to flow until all the air's out. Always make sure that your hydraulic reservoirs are topped up, because if you run dry in the reservoir, you're just going to suck air back through the system and you'll be back to square one. So do all four calipers on the front, one by one, allow the uh, fluid to come through the, the, the bleed tube, make sure there's no air in it. On the back, you apparently you have to be careful, I wasn't aware of this whenever I've done it in the past, so I've never experienced it, but if you hold your foot down on the pedal hard and crack off the bleed screw quickly, you can actually cause the, the, the limiting valve to come in. So you just need to be careful and just check, just treat it a bit more carefully. Keep your foot halfway down on the pedal, open a bleed screw slightly and let a little bit of fluid flow through and then you can open it fully a bit more slowly. Um, there's a couple of things I've written down that might be worth mentioning. So the front, the, the reservoir is split into two parts, front part and the back part. The front Reservoir compartment supplies fluid for the front brake pump, the front hydraulic accumulator, the lower brake distribution valve, uh, and the front calipers of the front brakes. And it says the lower or upper cylinders of the rear brake calipers, depending on the year of the car. So that, that's just worth mentioning. So that you think brake system one, brake system two, front and rear. Um, the rear reservoir compartment supplies the rear pump the rear hydraulic accumulators, the automatic height control system, the upper brake distribution valve, and the rear calipers of the front brakes. So the front two calipers are fed by the front brake pump and the front part of the reservoir. The rear of the front calipers are fed by the rear brake pump and the rear part of the reservoir. So it's just good to get your idea around the system. The height control also would need to be bled if it's had any air introduced into it. Under normal conditions with just the driver and a full tank of petrol, I think the height control shouldn't come into operation at all. So you need to put, get a couple of people to sit on the boot and lower the suspension down on the back to allow the height control to operate. Then you've got two bleed screws, on one on each ram inside the boot, um, which you need to open and allow the pressure to flow through. Again, making sure that the engine's running and you've got fluid in the, in the reservoirs. Um, so, after I think 20 odd thousand chassis range, they do away with the master cylinder and then the rear calipers are both systems are fed by the power system. Uh, I can't remember which way around, upper or lower, but that you, you, you won't need to worry about bleeding out the master cylinder first. Um, just the both bleed screws, you can treat them like the normal power system bleeding like the fronts. Uh, one thing to mention is when you are putting a, calip uh, a master cylinder on, you just have to be careful about the adjustment of that rod because some cars, people go out and, and the back wheels will lock up because these haven't been adjusted correctly. There is adjustments in the workshop manual for setting up the whole brake linkage. 
So that's the silver shadow breaking system pretty much summed up uh, in basic. I may well have missed some stuff, like I'm not an expert, so if anyone's got anything to add, please feel free to add it in the comments. Um, we're always learning on all of these subjects. The silver spirit system is very similar, except you get the, the green citron style spheres, disposable throwaway ones, and a different looking valve body, and obviously completely different fluid. In 1980, when they go over to the mineral system, there's a big uh, thing on the reservoir saying what type of fluid you should use and you always have to make sure that you're using the right fluid because if you do use the wrong fluid, all of these components would need to be changed and resealed and it's a lot of work um, along with the pipe work. So the spirit system is, is to be bled the same way but you don't have to worry about a master cylinder. You can bleed both of the rear bleed nipples on the rear caliper in that, exactly the same way. Um, the height control it has got, it's not in the boot, it's got a, a pipe that comes down into a, a block with a bleed screw in it in front of the rear wheels, just underneath the, the front of the wheel arch. Um, and you have, to, you have to allow the car to sit down so it's, it pushes all the uh, fluid out of the rear struts. I think once you've got most of the air out, it's pretty much self-bleeding the rear struts, but the brakes all, always have to be, you have to make sure there's no air in the system because it's a sealed system. I think that's pretty much all for now, um, but if there is anything else to add, please feel free to comment and share the video and yeah, please feel free to give any other suggestions for the next one. Thanks.